I'm really happy to have Jim Kalish with me today. We're going to be talking about confusion with caterpillars. All right, Jim, would you describe the differences to our audience between monarch caterpillars and swallowtail caterpillars? And then, of course, the adults, which I think is a little bit easier, but it's that caterpillar thing that has people all confused. So, yeah, sure, I can do that. It's pretty quick. You know, one thing that we all have to remember, too, is host plant, because you're only going to find uh, monarch caterpillars on milkweed host plants and nothing else exclusively. So that caterpillar, of course, is striped and uh, black, white, yellowish stripe that go across the body. And then it has these floppy little tendril things that stick out toward the front that are black. And so there's nothing on it otherwise. But like with the swallowtail uh, caterpillars, we're going to find Oh, a variation of stripes and spots. Like with black swallowtail, we have variations of black and white stripes and yellow spots. And then there's little tiny little tubercles or projections on the top of the body. But uh, if you dare squeeze one of them, it's kind of interesting because these this forked smelly thing comes out and uh, it's orange in coloration. And uh, that's one of the characteristics of that family of swallowtails. That's a defense mechanism because that stuff smells awful. So same way with the tiger swallowtail as well. Now the tiger swallowtail is really swollen, not, not greenish, has those eye spots on the front. But again, when it's disturbed or pressured by the fingers or whatever, when you pick it up, out come the, those osmoteria, which are the name of those smelly things that come out that are orange. And then again with the larvae or the caterpillars of the swallowtails, uh, black swallowtail especially, you're going to find them all on plants in the carrot family. So that would mean like what? Um, carrot, dill, anise, um, cilantro, those kinds of plants. And so um, that's essentially, that's what you find them on those plants and they're kind of a striped, spotted, yellowish, attractive caterpillar. That's what they be in the swallowtail family, black swallowtails. Jim, another one that really has people confused is the difference between Polyphemus cecropia and those darn tomato hornworms. And that again is both the caterpillars and the adult moths. So could you clarify that one for our audiences? Essentially, though, we start out with uh, the larvae or the caterpillars of each are all going to be green. You notice that the moths or the adults themselves are quite different. All right, so like with Cecropia caterpillar, it's large and greenish, and it has a whole bunch of colorful spiny tubercles all over its body as protection. So they would be red, blue, yellow color uh, in that kind of color. So prickly, hard to touch, and very large. And you'd find this on a number of different plants. We think like apple, we think about uh, lilac, and other kinds of related plants. All right, where Polyphemus is, it's a beautiful iridescent green, and it has just hairs on its body. It's a little bit more squat in size, not as long and not as large. And so we find that on a number of different kinds of host trees and shrubs. Um, maple and oak are, are some of the favorites, as well as uh, um, dogwood, yeah. Okay, and then obviously trees and shrubs for those two large moths, but now we get down to the hornworms. Now they're beautiful and there are some good ones in the family, but we often think about the, the tomato and tobacco hornworms and they're large and greenish. The host plants for the sphinx moths or the tomato hornworm and tobacco hornworm, obviously, tomato, tobacco, pepper plants and related types of vegetable garden crops. And so they feed on the same thing. They look about the same um, being large and green, but there's a distinctive tail, a very sharp uh, husky tail on the tip of the abdomen on the end of the body. And so they're called hornworms, obviously, because they have that horn as well. And then they have some stripes on the, on the sides. The tobacco hornworm has uh, just chevron, or just straight, straight stripes. And then uh, the tomato hornworm has chevron uh, stripes. So both again, large, but remember that horn on the tip of the body and only in the tomato, the nightshade family, the crops that, that are in that family. All right, in true entomology fashion, you have actually discovered a live creature that is an insect, not a rodent or anything else. And you have brought that to us. Can you tell us what this one turns into and what's gonna happen because you found it alive? Interesting, yeah. 
essentially what I did was, this was on Groundhog's Day, and in the entomology world, what do we have? We have, don't have groundhogs, but this comes close. This is the woolly bear caterpillar that everybody thinks that somehow it tells us how long our winter is going to be based on how long that reddish band is in the body. And this is all pure poppycock, but you know, at one time people really believed it. But essentially this was alive on Groundhog's Day. And so I don't know, it could go either way. We could have six more weeks of snow and cold weather, or maybe we'll have an early spring. I'm not sure. But interesting that it's still alive, not hungry. Um, it's waiting to go somewhere else and hide again until winter returns and then it will eat a little bit more and develop and turn into one of those beautiful um, tiger moth, uh, beautiful tiger moths that emerge in early spring. Jim, thanks for sharing all that great identification information with us. We'll look forward to more on Backyard Farmer this spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my pleasure to share all this stuff in advance of the coming spring and summer when all those butterflies and moths are everywhere. <laughs>